to the Lord with all my might. Lord, I come before your throne. Singing a hallelujah. Singing with my voice aloud. Giving thanks and praise all day and night. Cause only you are righteous, Lord. I give you praise. Lifting up your holy hand. Lifting up your voice saying God's alright. Now the time has come to take the stand. Walking in the power of the light. If you love him, you should give him praise. Praise him with the I, hallelujah. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Hallelujah. And I will lead and guide, direct your path. Show the way that you should take his hand and you will surely see. Only just believe. So now we have a reading of the law. And we're going to start from Exodus. 20th chapter, verses 1 to 17. Okay, go ahead. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into the 22nd chapter of Revelation. Read verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So sisters and brothers, this is the reading of law which Israel did every Sabbath day. And I have to ask the question, if the law was done away with like it's being taught in most churches, why is it that God made such a fuss over it? You just really, except for adding the baptism in the name of Jesus, you just really saw the simplicity of getting salvation. Like Jesus said when a young man asked him, good master, what should I do to get eternal life? First thing he said, don't call me, why call thou me good? Ain't nobody good but God. He's talking about the Father. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That is so simple. And man has taken the simplicity out of the word of God. Today's lesson is the great tribulation. Three and a half years, not seven. The great tribulation. Three and a half years, not seven. The reason the Lord caused me to put this together, sisters and brothers, because it is taught for most of all ministers in all religion, for the ones that have enough knowledge to know about the Great Tribulation, they said a tribulation of seven years. 
if you are waiting for seven years to flee to the place of safety, you're going to get caught up in the great tribulation. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching YouTube, and I saw a, a Gentile minister. He said, well, the great tribulation is three and a half years, but the tribulation is seven. I said, he halfway learned it. But being, if you got some understanding, and your understanding stops and to the point where you think it's going to be seven-year tribulation, I said, that is a recipe for Satan because you're going to get caught up in it, sister and brother. And we're going to show you this. So now, what we're going to do first is look at something here because most of the people that think that the great tribulations are seven years, they got it out of the ninth chapter of Daniel. And I have said for years, according to the Scripture, the ninth chapter of Daniel, no part of it have anything to do with the great tribulation or the Antichrist they talks about. So we're just going, before we get off in the main meat of this lesson, we're going to go and we're going to analyze the part of the ninth chapter of Daniel where they got this great seven-year tribulation from. And we're going to see if we can find a seven-year tribulation in here, and we're going to see if we can find an Antichrist which they said going to make a covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he's going to call sacrifice no place to see. So that's supposed to uh, uh, justify the seven years because one week of years is seven years. But we're going to look at this and see if this is indeed talking about the great tribulation or the Antichrist or is it talking about somebody else? like Judah, Jews, and Jesus, the Messiah. So we're going to Daniel's the ninth chapter, Daniel's chapter 9. We're going to take our line, time and analyze it. You know, sometimes people say, well, the last class is kind of long. You ain't got nowhere else to go. <laughs> what is this? Okay. I think we had some guy we brought in here that we had to pay to fix that system. Maybe I need a refund. But the whole thing is, getting back to what I was saying, so I can't get an interruption like this. You know, in November, I'll be 78 years old. So, you know, when you interrupt a cat my age, he loses thought. But get to it, sisters and brothers. We're going to see what this is really talking about. Because, uh, like I said, if you're going to wait for the seven years, you're going to have a problem. Especially when you're talking about he's going to make a covenant with the people over there in the land. And then in the midst of the uh, 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 week, he's going to break the covenant. But the Great tribulation starts, and it lasts for seven years. Now, we're in Daniel's the ninth chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Because we're going to take our time and analyze it. And before I was interrupted by this, uh, the PA system, we have some people say, well, Brother Boy, you know, sometimes the classes are long. Like I said, you ain't got nowhere to go. You're going to hurry up and go home and sit down. Or if you go to the restaurant and go buy something, you're going to pollute the Sabbath day. Where are you going? Oh, that's simple. Well, I get tired of bringing a pillow. One day, the Lord have asked us to have a holy convocation. One day. And we should thank God that he has given us a day to learn about him. I can understand if you were coming here and hear a whole lot of hooping and hollering and shouting and drinking water and falling down and kicking and speaking in a language that you don't even understand. I say, I can get tired of that, but here you're going to learn something. Because you're supposed to learn how to work out your own salvation. I can't save you. 
Your mother can't save you. Your father, your spouse. Like people say, well, my, my wife said or my husband said, when it comes to standing before God, you by yourself. And what you know and how you behave with that knowledge is going to determine whether you're going to get saved or not. It's all an individual thing. Like Paul said, I have to keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest after I have preached to many, I become a castaway. So that means that guys like me can only save me. And if I am not careful, I will lose me. Think about it. Thank God that you are able to learn this. Daniel's the ninth chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, uh -huh. which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Now, you see, Nebuchadnezzar, a uh, 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 son, God killed him for drinking out of his vessel. And so now, the Medo-Persian did not take over by four sisters and brothers. Darius, because the Babylonian kingdom was over the whole earth. So when Nebuchadnezzar's son was killed because he drank out of the holy vessels of God, then Darius, the Midians, which is a Russian sister and brother, this people, I'm letting you know who people are, which were Russians, Gentiles. They, he took over the kingdom. He inherited the kingdom. Go ahead and read. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years. Uh -huh. Well, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet Go ahead. that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ash. So he was talking about the time when Nebuchadnezzar was going to take Jerusalem down and Jerusalem is going to be empty for seven years. No Israelites didn't leave one now. However, sisters and brothers, this thing was just more than a literal 70, seven years. It went to uh, 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 70 years, rather. It went to 70 times 7. But we have another lesson for that. We can't get off into all that. But now, Daniels knew that it was, it was more to that in Jeremiah's reading. Another lesson we'll show you. But this is not the lesson for that. So now, being that he knew it was more, he turned to the Lord and started praying for understanding. So let's go to, skip down the 20th verse. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20. And go ahead. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord, uh -huh. my God for the holy mountain of my God. Go ahead. Yeah. While I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So Daniel was praying for understanding. That's what, the, that's what, the, that's what you have to do. You have to read and pray for understanding. So while he was stand, uh, uh, praying, then the Lord sent Gabriel. He said a man Gabriel, but Gabriel is an angel, sister and brother. So he was called to fly swiftly and touch them by the time of the evening sacrifice. That's the evening oblation. Go ahead and read. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, uh -huh. I am now come to give thee skill and understanding. And that's what the angel, that's what the Spirit came to do. This is the same one that took the message to the people in the New Testament. And the Lord said, I'm going to send him to you. And he will lead and guide you into all truth. So when the Spirit come upon you, sisters and brothers, it's not to make you kick and flop, flip-flop on the floor. It is to inform you. So I've come to give you skill and understanding. Go ahead and read. 23. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Uh -huh. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Go ahead. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. See, he didn't say 70 years. Here he says 70 weeks. But like I said, that's another lesson. He said, determine upon you and upon, pay attention now. De uh, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. Who are the people? Israel. Who are the holy city? Jerusalem. Go ahead. Nothing about Rome. Go ahead and read. To finish the transgression uh -huh. and to make an end of sin. Go ahead. And to make reconciliation for iniquity uh -huh. and to bring in everlasting righteousness. 
Uh -huh. and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. That's a whole lot of stuff was to be done, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So who was the most holy Jesus? When was, that's when, we, when he became the Messiah, when he was anointed. He was not born the Messiah. He was anointed. And he didn't, was not anointed until he was 30 years old, sister and brother. And why did Jesus wait until he was 30 years old to get anointed? Because there is a law that the Lord put out there. That if you're going to enter into the ministry, you need, you, you, if you are over, if you are uh, uh, under 30, you cannot enter into the ministry. And if you're over 50, you cannot enter into the ministry. But sometimes some of the oldest brothers don't want to deal with that. But I've seen a few of them over 50 come and try to teach. I listen to their teaching. And then I pick up the phone and I call them. Maybe the Lord didn't put that law in there for nothing, sister and brother. But this is from the Lord. That's one of the big things where, you know, Brother Boo is hard. Brother Boo is not hard. Brother Boo, if, you can, if I'm going to cherry pick the law, then where do, I, where do I stop? So now, he said, and to anoint the most holy, which is Jesus, go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, uh -huh. shall be seven weeks. Go ahead. And three score and two weeks. Uh -huh. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So now, the commandment was given by Artaxerxes, a Persian king, to go and build Jerusalem. And they had, and it was built in troublous times because Nehemiah then, when they were building the Jerusalem and putting up the wall, they had to have a spear in one hand and lay bricks with the other hand because the locals was trying to cut it out. That's it from that time that Artaxerxes, a Greek king, a, a Persian king, from that time that he gave the commandments to restore Jerusalem until the Messiah, that's until the anointing of Jesus, was 69 weeks. So now Jesus had to come. He was, now, I still don't see Antichrist nowhere. I still don't see great tribulation here nowhere. But go ahead and read. 26. And after three score and two weeks, uh -huh. shall Messiah be cut off. And after three score and two weeks, after he get here, he going to be cut off. Go ahead and read. But not for himself. So who did he die for, sisters and brothers? Us. He died for us. So after he get here, he going to be cut off, but not for himself. Go ahead and read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now that's what they said. See, this is, this is the, uh, 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 the Antichrist and his army. Look, when Jesus, after Jesus came and left, went back to heaven, about 40 years later, Titus in 70 AD came in and destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. Those are the priests, people of the prince, Roman soldiers, and destroyed it down to the ground. Go ahead. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. Uh-huh. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. It's an unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. That was determined before Titus was born, sisters and brothers. But then, getting back to Jesus now, verse 27. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, they said this is talking about the Antichrist going to make the recovery. The, the, covenant with many for one week. Did anybody see Antichrist in here anywhere? No. And we are a very educated generation. We know the difference from the word concern, confirm and make, don't we? To make something is to bring it into existence for the first time. To confirm is to strengthen or either cosign something that's already in existence. So he said he shall confirm, confirm the covenant with many for one week. So the first thing is, if we're going to confirm the covenant, what covenant are we talking about? Let's go look at it. Let's go into Genesis, the 17th chapter. But we, this is a little mini lesson to show you that the falsehood of the seven-year tribulation is just that, falsehood. Genesis chapter 17. Because if he's going to confirm the covenant with many, we want to know what covenant it is that he's going to confirm. If we don't know, then if he do it, we still won't know it because we don't know what he came to, or what the covenant is. 
So you have to know it all, sisters and brothers. That's why I tell people, you know, well, well Brother Bull, where should I read? Where should I read? Start at Genesis, the first chapter. And read. And then when you want to stop reading, put your marker there. If you want to try and put together a lesson or you want to pursue a particular subject, put your marker there. When you get through with your pursuit, go back there and keep reading. You'll be surprised at what you will learn by the time you finish Revelation. But when I get to Revelation, what I do? Go back to Genesis, the first chapter. But brother, how is it that you understand all this stuff you understand? Because I went to Genesis, the first chapter. Otherwise, you got to read, sister and brother. Genesis 17, and we're going to start at verse 1. 17 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, uh -huh. I am the Almighty God. Uh -huh. Go before me and be thou perfect. That's when God approached Abram before he changed his name to Abraham. He said, I'm the Almighty God. Walk before me and be not perfect. Go ahead and read. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Uh -huh. And will multiply thee exceedingly. So now Abraham had a responsibility before he was going to make this covenant. He had to walk before God and be as perfect as he can be. You know, for a man to be perfect, that's a, that's a, hall, that's a tall order. But God gave this man a little latitude. That's why he spoke about sin. So if you sin willfully, so what you don't do on purpose is not hell against you. Only that which you, when you break his law on purpose. But anyway, he said, if you do that, walk perfect before me, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Go ahead and read. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, uh -huh. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And that have a broad meaning, sisters and brothers. Because yeah. not, not only is Abraham the father of, of Israel, he is also the father of the faithful. He said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Go ahead and read. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, Go ahead. but thy name shall be Abraham. Uh -huh. For father of many nations have I made thee. Ham means many, sisters and brothers. So he changed his name to fit the new title that he was going to give him because he's going to become the father of many nations. Go ahead and read. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh huh. And I will make nations of thee. Go ahead. And kings shall come out of thee. Uh huh. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in the generations for an everlasting covenant. He said, I'm going to, and I'm going to bring kings out of you and I'm going to establish my covenant between you. And your seeds in their generation. Go ahead and read. To be a God unto thee uh -huh. and to thy seed after thee. Now he said, I'm going to make this covenant. Now skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt call her name no more Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. See now, Abraham hooked up with an Egyptian woman and they come up with the father of the heir, which is Ishmael. But God didn't come up with that. Abraham's wife come up with that. But God going to make this covenant. He says, so now, but I'm going to make a covenant. He's going to make his, the covenant going to go down through his, uh, 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 Isaac. Therefore, he said, Sarah, Sarai, call her name Sarah now, because uh, he's the one that I'm, he, she's the one that I'm going to bring this covenant through. Go ahead and read. What Six, verse? 16. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her. Uh -huh. And she shall be a mother of many nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now, this is an old woman here. So when Abraham was told that by God, people said, well, you know, you know, Abraham believed in God. He sure did, but Abraham needed a little persuasion too. And let's look at it. What did Abraham say? Go ahead and read. Then Abraham fell upon his face and uh -huh. laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? See, now, Abraham had a problem with that. He laughed in his heart, but God can read the mind too. Now, he's thinking. 
Look here. I'm 100 years old. My whole lady is 90 years old. Uh uh. Mm. So I'm going to make God a proposal. What is the proposal he made with God? Go ahead. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. In other words, let the covenant come by. Ishmael, he is already here, the one I had by Hagar, the Egyptian woman. Like God can't do what he want to do. That's why I tell you, see, Abraham, he had a problem with that. Actually, he didn't believe God was going to do that. His faith came when this went down. I mean, really went down. Because he said, oh, that I wish that you use Ishmael. Because he was convinced that God couldn't make a 100-year-old man impregnate a 90-year-old woman. What did God say? Go ahead and read. 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Uh-huh. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant uh -huh. and with his seed after him. So I'm going to send him right. I'm going to send my covenant right down through his seed. He going to have one. Go ahead and read. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him uh -huh. and will make him fruitful Go ahead. and will multiply him exceedingly. Uh -huh. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. He said, now, for Ishmael, I know that Ishmael is your son, Abraham. But this people don't understand that <laughs> the, the, the Arabs over there, they're the children of Abraham just like we are. He says, I'm going to bless him. Twelve princes are going to come out of him. However, my covenant is going to go through Isaac. Go ahead. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, uh -huh. which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Now, God told him that. So God read his mind. I know Abraham didn't say, look at here, God. Look at him now, 100 years old, my old lady. Now. He didn't say that in his mind. But God read his mind, sister and brother. Like when he, because in another other scripture tell you, when Sarah heard it, she laughed in her mind. And God said, well, why are you laughing? I didn't laugh. Yeah, you laugh. You can't fool this God, sister and brother. So now, about the same time that God said at the time appointed, Sarah got pregnant. She had Ishmael and he had Isaac and Isaac grew up. Now the Lord is going to test Abraham. Now Abraham was convinced and his faith was solid. Let's look at this testing. Let's go into Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Because we have to go through this to find out about this covenant that's going to be confirmed. And, and by whom was it confirmed? Genesis 22, and we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis 22, and we're going to start at verse 1. I'm going to try to keep from going off and because we've got a lot of stuff in your head, then all of a sudden I want to throw this on the table. And so by the time I get through putting soup, Ingredients in this soup, you don't know where you are. So I'm going to try to control my head, okay? 22 and 1, go ahead and read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Go ahead. Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Go ahead. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, uh -huh. whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I would tell thee of. Now, I hear people read this and say, wait a minute. God said, take thy, thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Abraham had Ishmael. So the Bible's contradict. I said, no, it's not. You have to understand that God recognized those that are in a covenant with him. That's why I tell you, I say I ain't going to do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's why I said in, in uh, uh, Matthew 7 chapter, the people are going to come to him and say, Lord, Lord, I've done all these wonderful things in thy name. He's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And they was in church every Sunday. But they never came under the covenant. Because the Lord told Israel when he gave the commandments, he says, see, that you be careful about right need, because the, after the tenor of these words have I entered into a covenant with you. So you have to pay attention, sisters and brothers. So now, God tempted him, 
and says only son because he's the son of the covenant, even though we know Ishmael was his oldest son. So skip down to verse 9. Let's see what Abraham did. Go ahead. And they came to the place which God had told them of. Go ahead. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Go ahead. And Abraham stretched forth his knife, knife and took the knife to slay his son. Uh -huh. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Uh -huh. And he said, here am I. Now nah, he was going to kill Isaac. So we got ready to kill him. Then the Lord had an angel. The Lord had an angel call out to Abraham. And what did he say to him? Go ahead and read. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Go ahead. Neither do thou anything unto him. Uh -huh. For now I know that thou fearest God. So he Think. had, go ahead. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. God make it clear to the son of the covenant. That's who he recognized. So he said, look, now I know. See, people always say, God know everything. Maybe he do. I can't say that he didn't know this. However, I have to believe what I read. And what I'm reading here, he said, now I know that thou fears me. That would imply that he didn't know what Abraham was going to do. So he stopped it. So skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Go ahead. And said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Go ahead. That in blessing I will bless thee. Uh -huh. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Now this is a physical seed. Go ahead and read. And as a sand which is upon the seashore, uh -huh. and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Now, this is the one that the covenant is going to be built on. Verse 18, go ahead. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, uh -huh. because thou hast obeyed my voice. He said, and in thy seed shall all of the nations, the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. This is the covenant we're talking about. Let's go and confirm it. Let's go into Galatians. The third chapter. Because when he said, in thy seed shall all the nations on earth be blessed, sister and brother, he passed that covenant down from generation to generation. And we're going to show you until the Lord came. Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to read that verse, start reading at verse 7, 3 and 7. Okay, go ahead. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. See, that's what I said earlier. He's the father of the faithful as well as he's the father of Israel and those that came out of and the, and the Arab sister and brother. So if you got faith, I mean real faith, then he is your father no matter which one of Noah's sons you came out of. Go ahead and read. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, uh -huh. preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, uh -huh. In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So who was he talking about? In you shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed. We read back there, it said, in thy seed shall all the earth and the uh, 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 nation of the earth be blessed. So who is this seed? Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15. And go ahead. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Uh -huh. Though it be but a man's covenant. Go ahead. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. So he said, look, I speak after the manner of a man. Even if it's a man's covenant, it was between Abraham and God. If it is confirmed, can't nobody annul it, neither can they add to it. This covenant is going to be what it's going to be. But go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Uh -huh. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. Oh, so when he made that, when we read in Genesis, that 18th verse, when he said, in thy seed, he wasn't talking about the many now. Now he's talking one here. Yeah. That's why I said, in thy seed. He didn't say, uh, uh, 
as of many, but as of one. Go ahead. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So this is the covenant that he made with Abraham. In thy seed shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed. Go ahead and read. And this I say, uh -huh. that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. Now, so look, pay attention now. And this I say that the covenant that was conformed before God in Christ, what covenant in thy seed, O Abraham, shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed? In the law, which come 430 years later, this is talking about the law of animal sacrifice, not the commandment. Why I know it was not the commandment is because Satan sinned before man was created. And what is sin? The transgression of the law. So this law that was 430 years later, animal sacrifice was established once they had come out of the captivity in Egypt. So now, the covenant that God made with Abraham, animal sacrifice couldn't erase that, sisters and brothers. It was all in half. And he said, this covenant was confirmed in, uh, 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 by God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is the Messiah that's going to come and confirm the covenant with many. Let's go into Romans, the 15th chapter, and get a little more clarity to this. Romans chapter 15. And we're going to read one verse. Romans chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 8. 1, 15 and verse 8. Okay, read it. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. He was a minister of the circumcision. Go ahead. For the truth of God. Go ahead. To confirm the promises made unto the Father. For the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the Father. Not just Abraham, to everyone. Sisters and brothers, make a note of this. In Genesis, the 25th, uh, 26th chapter, and verse 4, he told Isaac, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In Genesis, chapter 28 and 14, he told Jacob, in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's why I said it, promises made to the Father. This was the covenant, that in his seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So what is the covenant that he confirmed? The covenant that he made with Abraham. Y'all understand? So now let's go back to Daniel's the ninth chapter and pick up the rest of it. Daniel's chapter 9. So he didn't make a covenant. Abraham, God made the covenant with Abraham. And Jesus came and confirmed it. You didn't see no Antichrist nowhere, did you? Neither did you see a great tribulation, did you? You know, sometime before you put the truth on the table, you have to expose the lie. Then the truth is not so hard to be seen. Daniel's 9. And we're going back to 27, and we may as well start it back at the 27th verse. Daniel's 9, and we'll start back at verse 27, then we will know what we read now. Verse 27, go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So we know that this covenant he's going to confirm for one week because Jesus was supposed to minister for three for seven years. But in the, what happened in the midst of the week? Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. In the midst of the week, he's going to cause that sacrifice and oblation to cease. Finish that. And for the overspreading of the abomination, she uh -huh. shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And that happened 40 years later, after Jesus had came. But what did he say? He shall cause the sacrifices and the old place in the sea. In the midst of the week. This have a two-fold meaning, sisters and brothers. The midst of his ministry. And also 
the midst of a literal week. Because we have a lesson to show you both of them, sister and brother, but we can't teach you everything at one time. So now, how did he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease? Let's go into Matthew, the 27th chapter, and find out. But we've proven that he confirmed the covenant. It was Jesus that he confirmed the covenant. Ain't this what the book said? Yep. You can't get around that, sister and brother. But now let's see how he's going to call the sacrifices and the oblations to stop. That's what C is. I'm going to put an end to it. We're going to start reading at verse 35. Matthew chapter 27. And we're going to start reading at verse 35. 27 and 35. 27 and verse 35. Okay, go ahead. And they crucified him uh -huh. and parted his garment. Didn't they say he's going to be cut off? But not for himself? That means he's going to be crucified and they parted his garments. Go ahead and read. Casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Uh-huh. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So we showed you in the last week's lesson that that had to happen, didn't it? Yep. Prophecy called it all for Jesus. But skip down to verse 46 and go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Go ahead. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now he cried out. Now he cried again. Skip down to verse 50. Verse 50 and go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Go ahead. And behold. That means he simply died, sisters and brothers. People say, well, you know, you got a, we got a soul inside of his own. You mean Jesus, the creator? Had a soul inside of him? Then that's another topic. Go ahead and read. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Uh-huh. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. What did that signify? We're going to pursue it, sister and brother, and find out. Because well, he said he's going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, didn't he? In the midst of the week. So we know that Jesus taught for three and a half years, and then they killed him. Ain't that the midst of the week? Mm -hmm. Now let's go in Leviticus, the fourth chapter, and let's see what happened around the veil. Do you know all of a sudden happened, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, 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 you, you ain't never seen a pistol before, and a guy stand up there with the weapon, and all of a sudden, uh, 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 he pulls some boom, and, and Brother Cornell fall on the floor. You ain't never seen that, but what happened? Then you have to find out what a pistol is for, don't you? And find out what happened when it go boom. If it's pointing at somebody, somebody died. So you have to pursue it. Otherwise, you'd never know. Now, Leviticus, the fourth chapter. So we're going to see what takes place around this veil, sisters and brothers. This is the way you find out stuff. You just can't look at stuff and try and uh, uh, give your own interpretation. We don't do that. We're the Israel of God Bible study class. And that's why we have, sisters and brothers, we have a group of brothers that critiques every teacher in the Israel of God, including me. If I make an error, you're going to call Brother Boy, uh, you know, you said this is brother. You right. Then I correct it. You know why? Because we refuse to be like the Sunday churches. If I don't understand it, I'm going to put me an answer to it. No, no. When this veil rent, we got to find out why, what happened. And why did it, rip, it was ripped when Jesus died on the cross and not before. Verse 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which are not to be done. You know that, that word through ignorance, didn't you? Yeah. And to any of those things that the Lord should not, should not be done, go ahead and read. And shall do against any of them. Uh -huh. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, uh -huh. then let him bring for his sin which he have sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. Now look, the priest got to bring a sin off for the people, but if he sinned, he got to bring one for himself to the door of the, uh, uh, the, door of the tabernacle. Go ahead and read. 
And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Go ahead. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head Go ahead. and kill the bullock before the Lord. Uh-huh. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh -huh. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. So now, if the people, uh, 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 if individuals sin, or if the priest sin, they got to kill a young bull, sister and brother. Then the priest going to take part of his blood, and he going to dip his finger in it, and he's going to go to the tabernacle of the congregation and go in and sprinkle it seven times before the veil. So what if the whole nation sinned? Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13. And go ahead. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance. Now notice he always going through ignorance, isn't he? Yeah. I want, I'm pointing that out, sisters and brothers, to let you know well, you know, I'm going to commit me a little sin today and I'm going to repent tomorrow. He might kill you tonight. And you wake up going eyeball to eyeball with the fire. You have to be on your best, best behavior all the time. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, go ahead and read. And the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly. Uh -huh. And they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty Go ahead. when the sin, which they have sinned against it, is known. So you're guilty when you're committed, whether you know it or not. But you don't know about it. That's your break. But once you find out that you have sinned, then you got to do what it takes to make an atonement. So when the sin is known, go ahead and read. Then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin uh -huh. and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. They got to do that. Let's see what they're going to do with his blood. Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. So now the whole nation sin. The priest got to go and put his hand. They got to kill his young bull. The priest got to take some blood. And put his finger in it and go before the veil and sprinkle it seven times before the veil. Why is, what is this supposed to do when he sprinkled his blood? Skip down to verse 20. And it'll tell you. Go ahead and read. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. Go ahead. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. So that's how the atonement was made. To get that blood of the bull, and whether it was the individual, whether it was the priest, or whether it was the whole nation, when they sinned against God, they had to go and kill a young bull, put their finger in some of the blood, the priest that anointed, and go and sprinkle it before the veil. So now what happened when the veil ripped from top to bottom? They ain't got nowhere to sprinkle the blood. So now if you don't have nowhere to sprinkle the blood, then why are you killing the animal? Now you got to make a sin offering and you don't have no, no veil to go before and sprinkle the blood to make an atonement for the sin. So when Jesus died on the cross, that veil ripped. That was the end of animal sacrifice. That's why I said in the midst of the week, he should call the sacrifices and the oblation to cease. But let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and confirm that, sisters and brothers. Hebrews chapter 10. Because the Lord is very thorough and what he had written for our consumption. Therefore, he is not going to tolerate this false teaching, sister and brother, because he have it all written down. All written down. Like you have a map that leads to California, and you have another lap, map that leads to falling off of a cliff if you drive that way. So if you take the wrong turn in the map and don't know that that's the one to the falling off of the cliff, and you're going to drive off the side of the cliff. Did you think that the Lord, that, that the cliff going to say, I'm sorry, and I ain't going to let you do that? No, you're going to fall off the cliff and you're going to die. Why? Because you did not read this road map that was provided for you. This is what this Bible is, a road map to salvation. Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Hebrews 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead. For the law 
Having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the thing. Now, people read this and say, see, this is a commandment here. But that's an no, all. Keep reading. Go ahead. Can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually uh -huh. make the comers there until perfect. So now, what's, you can't become perfect. Perfect could become part of God's family, the mortal. So this is animal sacrifices, isn't right. it? Yes. So this law, there's a shadow of things to come. Is the law of animal sacrifice. And they could not make the, uh, the uh, one that uh, make these sacrifices perfect. Why? Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So that's why he could, you couldn't be made perfect. Because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. Oh. That's what they sprinkle before the veil. Isn't that correct? So now, being that the Lord saw that, he knew something else had to take place. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body has thou prepared me. Oh, so he said, you didn't like sacrificing. So a body thou hast prepared me. This is a flesh and blood body that had to be prepared, uh, prepared and Jesus took it over, sisters and brothers. And the animal, and the angel came and, in, and inserted into his mother Mary. That's why it's called Immaculate Conception, because she never laid with a man. Even when the angel told her that you're going to have a son and she'll call his name Jesus, and the Lord God going to give him the throne of his father David, and he's going to rule over the house of Jacob forever, Mary said, how can this be, seeing that I have not known a man? But don't nobody pay little things like that no attention. So this body was prepared for her. And who was and, and, and who for him? And who took it over? Jesus. Go ahead and read. Six. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So he didn't have no pleasure in it because it couldn't remove sin. And last week we showed that he came in the volume of the books, didn't we? Yeah. He said, Because it's written of me. So people have a problem with Jesus. You got a problem. Go ahead and read. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Go ahead. Neither hadst pleasure therein, uh -huh. which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law of animal sacrifice. He didn't have no pleasure in them because they couldn't remove sin. It was an exercise in futility. He put it out there to make sure that he put some kind of governor on you. Because if you... If you Sin and you had to kill one of your animals, you could go broke in a minute, couldn't you? So you cool out just for the sake of not going broke. He said, but hey, he didn't like that, which was offered by the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead and read. Nah. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Go ahead. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. First covenant, that's the one that he made with Israel, not Abraham. That he might establish a second. Go ahead and read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And when he was offered, what did that mean? Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18. And go ahead. Now where remission of these is. Well, now where remission of these is, go ahead. There's no more offering for sin. There's no more offering for sin. Because when he died on the cross, that veil of the temple ripped. He caused our sacrifice and the oblation to see. But go ahead. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. By a new and living way. Go ahead. Which he have consecrated for us. Uh -huh. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Oh, so now you got to go through a new and living way, don't you? Yeah. When you sin uh, uh, inadvertently, unintentionally, then when you, you get on your knees and face Jerusalem, which is east, that's if you in America. If you're in Russia, then you face west. If you're in Greek or Spain somewhere, then you face south. But either way you go, you pray to the Lord because there is no more sacrificing for sin. 
So he hath provided a new and living way. There's, it said the veil which is his flesh. Then you pray to the Lord. You don't kill no more animals now because he'll call the animals sacrifices to see. So now that's what Daniel's the ninth chapter was about. It was about Jesus, Jerusalem, and the Jews, sisters and brothers, and what the blood of Jesus would do for the rest of the nation. It had nothing to do with great tribulation. Nothing at all. So now, you go to a place that had nothing to do with the Antichrist or nothing to do with great tribulation, and you're going to get you seven years of tribulation out of it, and you're going to get your Antichrist. And the people running around preaching that. But we see that nothing like that we just read. Isn't that correct? So now what we're going to do? We're going to go to the Scripture now and look at the Scripture that do talk about the Great Tribulation. And we're going to see how many years they say it's going to be. Not one time we can read seven-year tribulation. Not one time. So we're going to see if we can look at this three and a half years. We're going to go to the scripture that points toward them now. Let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew's 24. Because next time somebody's going to try to take you to ninth chapter Daniel to show you seven-year tribulation, you can ask them some, per some questions that's going to make them end up asking you some questions. Like, okay, then, what is it? Because the Lord is, is clear. You don't, you don't need no room for interpretation. That's why I have a problem with people trying to deal with the word of God, and they're going to put their spin on it. And one of the worst things people ask, can ask me, well, what are you, well, you know, well, 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 what's your take on this? What are you talking about? Well, what's your opinion? What are you talking about? You haven't seen me give you my take or my opinion. I give you what I read. It's all that simple. Matthew 24, and we're going to start at verse 1. Now we're going to deal with the amount of years of the great tribulation. Go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, It shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. Now that's why it said in ninth chapter of Daniel that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, didn't it? Right. So he said, this temple you see, there ain't going to be one stone on another. That's why I know that well and wall is not a part of the temple, sisters and brothers, that they be bumping their head on in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. Three. And as he sat down upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Go ahead. Tell us. When shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they asked him three specific questions. When shall these things be? When shall be the time of your coming and the end of the world? What did Jesus, go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name. Many shall come in the name of the, the pimp. My name. Many going to come in the name of selling drugs. My name. Many shall come in my name, he said. That's the name of Jesus. Go ahead and read. Saying, I am Christ. Saying that I am the anointed one uh, of the Messiah. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. You know that Jesus didn't warn you about the street people. He warned you about the preacher. Ain't nobody looked to pay no attention to that. I heard that Jeremiah gave a lesson on this, on this similar, and he read this in his question. I'll never forget as long as I live. He said, where they at? <laughs> I'll tell you where they at. They standing behind the pulpit. Many should come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. Go ahead and read. And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Now we ain't worried about that. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. He's letting you know. Many false prophets. But now they're going to come in his name. Go ahead and read. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Where's the love now, sister and brother? Ain't no love. 
Man fall out on the street, don't nobody stop and help him. The guy going to come and he's going to pick his pocket while he's laying there. Somebody hungry, come, brother. Could you spare now? Get the blanket of blank out of my blanket before I blank your old blanket. Ain't no love left, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So who goes, but who going to be saved? Ones that that one that walk in this word in righteousness until the end. I'm just killing a lot of little bit of things that people put out there. Well, since I got saved, I said, when was that? He that endure to the end, the same going to be saved. Go ahead and read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world uh -huh. for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's why I'm trying to get this gospel out here, sister and brother. The Lord has blessed us to be a worldwide ministry. And we're preaching it all over. I know. I had evidence. I get emails from everywhere. Boy, I didn't know this. You got a Bible? Yeah, read your Yeah, it's in there. Why didn't it? Well, you know, I didn't know it. That's because somebody had planted something else in your head. When you think that you have what you need, then you don't look for nothing else. That's the big deception. You eat when you're hungry. You go to what? Because you don't want to be broke. You can run them lottery, get you three, four million dollars. The first thing you're going to do is pick up the phone and call your boss and tell him where he can go. Why aren't you going to work? Because I don't need to no more. Think about what I'm saying. So if you think you got the word of God, you ain't going to look for it. But this gospel got to be preached in all the world, then the end come. And I know that it's talking about this time is because what Peter them did, that died in 70 AD. Then the Gentiles picked this thing up, and now you've been taught Easter and Sunday and going to heaven, devil in the ground, barbecuing people. You can eat anything. All you got to do is pray over it. And ain't no law. That means I can come and I can steal your money. I can lie on you. I can sleep with your wife. And I'm still cool. So somebody got to teach this gospel in all the world. What gospel is it? Teach this book that's in everybody's possession. In everybody's language. I could read what God said we're going to do it like that. But go ahead and read. What verse? 15. Uh -huh. When ye therefore... You'll see the abomination of desolation uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Don't you know people have been in church all their life and don't even know about this? When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever read that, this, you better understand. Because if you don't, you got you some real drama coming. Go ahead and read. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So if you're in, Ju in Judea over there, don't stay. I want you to get up out of there. You go to the mountains. Go ahead and read. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Go ahead. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Uh-huh. Now that let you know how urgent that is. Wherever you are, you better flee. Mm-hmm. And there's a place where the Lord going to have his people flee from all over the world, but you got to be right. You got to know the sign. Why? Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Uh -huh. No, no ever shall be. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. Uh -huh. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, I know people don't know about this great tribulation, sisters and brothers. They don't know about the abomination of desolation. Because people running around now talking about, you know, if you get the vaccine, you can get the mark of the beast. Sisters and brothers. Can't nothing go down until the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place. And let me know, somebody don't have no understanding. I've even heard it from some people in Israel. Even in the Israel of God, I want to faint it. Where you been, where you been all the time? 
Your body was sitting here, but your mind was, must be on, on your couch in front of your TV. He said, when you see this flea, the one that Daniel spoke about, 